In the last couple of days, I've been playing around with a really interesting Linux distribution. You guys have been telling me I need to check out one of the Universal Blue distributions. You guys have been telling me really good things about Aurora. Aurora is their KDE Plasma-based distribution. If you go to their website at universal-blue.org, they actually make a few different distributions other than Aurora. We also have Bazite, which is for gaming. Uh, I'm not much of a gamer, so I don't know if I'll ever check out Bazite, but we also have Project Bluefin, which is their GNOME-based distribution, as well as Ucore, which is a server distribution. Uh, it looks like it's focused on containerization because you can see this is an OCI-based image of Fedora Core OS. For me, I've been playing around with Aurora for a couple of days, and I gotta say, I've been really impressed with this distribution. Installing Aurora is actually very simple. It uses the familiar Anaconda installer that Fedora has used forever. And really, it's, it's basically the same Anaconda installer you've always used. You go ahead and pick your uh, drive to install to. You create a root account if you want a root account. And then you create your home user account. And then essentially, you click the begin installation button and away you go. Now, typically, when I install Fedora, just mainline Fedora on my machines, that installation process takes about five to ten minutes. I will say installing Aurora takes a little more time as far as you're waiting for the installation to complete uh, a, a bit longer. I want to say it took me a good 25 minutes or so for the installation to complete. And I think the installation, why it takes a little longer with Aurora is probably because some of the package installations take a little longer because of some of the package managers they're using, in particular uh, RPM OS tree. Once you're logged into Aurora, of course, you get the familiar KDE Plasma desktop. We're on KDE Plasma 6 here. And the first thing we want to focus on probably is software, because that is what makes Aurora unique is the immutability of the system and how you get software. So you can use the Discover Software Center, which is you know KDE's software center. The Discover Software Center, you have a tab here for updates. My system's already up to date. Or you could install extra packages. For example, I don't know if they have VLC installed or not, but if I wanted to, I could click install from Flathub. So it's going to install VLC as a flat pack. And there's a couple of different ways you can install software here. Uh, you could install through the Discover Software Center. It's typically going to install things as a flat pack. You could install things at the command line. You could use RPM OS tree to install things. Also, there is the option to use DistroBox if you wanted to install packages from other distributions and have those run inside Aurora. We'll check that out here in a minute. But now that I've installed VLC, let me go to the menu system here and search for VLC. And I believe because we installed it through the software center as a flat pack, it would appear in the menu system. But if I had installed something using RPM OS tree at the command line, I don't think it would appear right away. If I search for a terminal, uh, KDE's console, is console not here? They're using a different terminal program. This terminal is called Tizix. I, I've never heard of this terminal emulator. I'm not sure what that's about. I do like the, uh, the shell prompt here. It's very colorful. I wonder what shell they're using. Are they using Bash or ZSH or maybe even the fish shell? If I do echo dollar sign zero, if this is Bash or ZSH, this should return the name of the shell. Yeah, so it's user bin bash. Uh, this command would not have returned anything if had that been the fish shell. So let's install something using rpm os tree. So I believe the command to install is simply install and then name of a program. Let me install something that I'm pretty sure wouldn't be here. Um, let's install Emacs. Now, one of the things with rpm os tree, this particular package manager, when it installs software, it takes a while. It's going to take probably several minutes to install Emacs, even though Emacs isn't necessarily a small package. It probably takes just 10 seconds or so to install, for example, in vanilla Arch Linux, right? But don't be surprised if this takes, again, a few minutes. I'm going to pause the video. I'll be back just as soon as this has finished installing. So I have been waiting several minutes now for Emacs to install with RPM OS tree. And you know, I, I, the reason I wanted to do this on camera is I wanted to show you how slow installing things with this particular package manager is uh, compared to installing something through 
flat pack, for example. So typically, if something is available as a flat pack, you probably want to install it as a flat pack rather than using this option. And I'm sure Emacs probably, I'm pretty sure they have a flat pack available for Emacs. I could have installed, but still, I wanted to, to install using RPM OS tree again just to see how slow it actually is. It's still going, guys. All right, that installation of Emacs finally uh, finished. It took uh, four minutes and 47 seconds, so right at five minutes. And if I go to the menu system and look for Emacs, um, Emacs is not going to be in the menu system because unlike when we install things through the Discover Software Center, which installed flat packs, you know, installing with uh, RPM OS tree does not immediately appear in the menu. You actually are gonna have to do a reboot to be able to use your newly installed software. If I tried to run Emacs from the command line, yeah, command not found. So essentially we are forced to do a reboot. So let's go ahead and reboot now. And it said, welcome to Grub. I don't know, it, it skipped the Grub menu. That's interesting that it didn't give us an option to even pick something in the Grub menu this time. Uh, not that I needed it, obviously. I just installed some software and I want to use my newly installed software. Maybe it's smart enough to know that. I, I actually, I'm not sure. Let me log in. And we get a, the Aurora logo. Took a few seconds for Plasma to load there and that probably had something to do with the fact that we installed some new software. And now when I go into the menu system and look for Emacs, now we can actually use good new Emacs, assuming I actually wanted to use it. If I get back into the menu system here and I do a search for DistroBox, actually they have a graphical front end to DistroBox. They're using BoxBuddy, which is something I've never really played with. Uh, I, I heard about it for the first time really just a, a few weeks ago, but I have never actually checked this out. Let's let's go ahead and create a little distro box here inside Box Buddy. So it says, click the plus at the top left. Let's click plus, and now I guess we need to choose a distribution. Let's do Arch because and that's probably the one. If I was running Aurora, I would probably want to keep uh, Arch available as a distro box, certain packages available. So let's go ahead and search for Arch Linux here, and let's do Arch Linux latest. If I just hit the Create button now, will it actually create that for me? I really like this graphical front end. <laughs> it's very easy to use, right? You hit the plus sign, uh, choose a distribution, hit the Create button, and away you go. Very cool, and you can see, once the installation completed, we have Arch here, this particular uh, distro box here that I titled Arch, and then it immediately launched it. You can see we are actually in a terminal, right? We get, well, actually it's still installing basic packages, it looks like. It says starting container, installing basic packages, so maybe I have to wait a few more minutes here. Yeah. And now it's completed. I'm very cool. And you can see my username, DT at Arch, is the host name. So if I actually did a Pacman dash capital Q lowercase q to see all installed packages, would it actually run that command? Returned a lib curl error? I wonder, could I do a sudo Pacman dash capital S lowercase yu? Huh. That's interesting. So I'm assuming I can't install software either. Could I install htop? Oh, I wonder why that didn't work. That is interesting. If I go to the uh, menu here and I search for Arch Linux, they did create a desktop entry for my Arch distro box. You can see host spawn, command not found. It didn't find something going on here with the bash shell. I'm getting an error. One more time, I'll do a sudo pacman dash capital S lowercase y u. Yeah, so. I could have created a distro box, but maybe I just didn't create it right. Again, I, I've never used Box Buddy. Maybe I'll try a, a second time. Now, before I didn't tick this on, use a knit system, maybe I needed to do that. Let's try that. We'll just do some testing here. Because that's the only thing I didn't do previously, so let's go ahead and create it with that ticked on. All right, and looks like it completed. Still getting this error in the bash shell. It's looking for this command, host dash spawn and command not found. So it's still having some errors. If I do a pacman dash qq, uh, yeah, still a libcurl error. That is weird. So I don't think either one of these are working here. 
How do I remove them? I guess I click delete box. And let's go ahead and delete this one since they're not working. If I can't use Pac-Man, I can't actually install anything, which kind of defeats the purpose of that having that distro box around. Let's do an Ubuntu. Uh, let's search for Ubuntu. Let's do Ubuntu 2204, which is not the latest LTS. It's the previous LTS, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and just see if Ubuntu works in Box Buddy. And it created the Ubuntu distro box looks like just fine. I don't get any weird error here at the end like I was with uh, the Arch Linux distro box. So since this is an Ubuntu system, let me do an apt command. I'll do apt list to list all the packages here. So this does look like it's actually working if I did an apt install htop. Uh, of course, it's not going to let me do that. I need sudo privileges. I should have known that. And now I can install that. And now I've got HTOP available. Very cool. I can run HTOP on my Ubuntu machine. I probably should have installed something graphical. So let me do Ubuntu again to open this terminal. Let's install a graphical application. So apt install and let's install, I don't know, something I know is not installed in KDE Plasma. So let's install gedit. Wow, there are a ton of dependencies for gedit. Well, it looks like it's gonna install it rather quickly though. So it finished installing gedit. Now if I launch gedit from this terminal, you can see I actually do get this GUI application, right? gedit, this text editor, is actually running inside Ubuntu, right? Inside Aurora. So how cool is that? So you do have multiple ways of getting applications installed. Obviously, you probably should default to installing things as flat packs and just use the Discover Software Center, or you could, I guess, install them uh, through the command line as well. You could use RPM OS tree at the command line. Or if you want to install applications from other distributions, maybe just standard vanilla Fedora or things like Debian or Ubuntu or Arch Linux didn't look like it was going to work for me. Uh, inside box buddy I don't know what the issue was that but again you have different ways to get software installed on Aurora one thing I should check out since I mentioned flat packs I'm not exactly sure how much uh, software is installed as a flat pack out of the box I did a flat pack list let me zoom out so you guys can see the full list here there's actually not that many packages installed as a flat pack. Uh, VLC I installed myself through the Discover Software Center. Other than that, uh, Firefox and Thunderbird and a few of the default KDE applications such as uh, Ocular and Contact and KCalc, um, but not much else. If I did a uname dash R, would it give me the kernel? It does. Let me run HTOP, assuming they have HTOP installed. Let's check out system resource usage. Now I gave this virtual machine is what I'm running here. Uh, I, I gave this virtual machine six gigs of RAM and I gave it two threads of my 24 thread Threadripper. You can see for RAM it's using 1.7 gigs of the six gigs of RAM. Now that may seem a little high, but it probably has to do with um, some of the, the uniqueness to this distribution. Also, I'm not exactly sure what file system uh, they're using uh, out of the box because I just went with the automatic partitioning when I ran through the installation. I'm not exactly sure if they're using Extend 4 or maybe they're using something more exotic. Probably ButterFS is my guess. Let me cue to quit out of the uh, HTOP. If I actually did a uh, LSBLK, so, so list all the block devices. Let's actually check the partition scheme. Looks like it created three different partitions out of the box. You can see VDA 1, 2, and 3. And if I want to go ahead and find what my file system is, if I didn't know what the file system was, I believe find MNT is uh, one of the commands you could use that would actually list all the mounted devices and tell you what file system type they are and you can see slash dev here is butterfs so we are using butterfs for the file system if for some reason you couldn't remember that command you could always check out your slash etsy slash fs tab the file system table so if i cat slash etsy slash fs tab this would also list your devices and you can see we're using uh, butter fs here when it comes to 
installed software as far as software out of the box i'm not going to go through the software because it's mainly just your standard default pieces of software mostly some standard kde stuff along with firefox and thunderbird there's really not much to see but you can see they don't install much you have kate the text editor you have your image viewer and your pdf viewer you have your web browser and your email client, right? There's not much here VLC I installed, but they had Haruna here for a uh, video player. They do not install an office suite. So it's kind of minimal, right? They don't install a lot of software, which is kind of shocking to me because you know, again, I, I thought the installation process, it took a long time. So when I first logged in, I expected like a full suite of software to be here. And it's really kind of a minimal installation. Like there's not a lot of programs here, uh, here in utilities. They have, you know, a, a variety of utilities, uh, very small little things like your uh, calculator and your uh, screenshot tool and things like that, but really not much else. Now, even though this is kind of a unique, a very different kind of distribution than the kinds of things I typically check out, one last thing I do have to do, I do have to right click and configure desktop and wallpaper. Let's check out the wallpapers. Do they have any cool wallpapers? Looks like they do have a lot of cool, like, space kind of shots, sky kind of shots, which the name Aurora, it would make sense why you would have some of these kinds of photographs and these are actually quite good actually here is clouds here is foothills i really like that one that's actually a, a beautiful photograph whoever took that let's go with sunset here nah, a little drab you know what i think i'm gonna go with the one i said i quite liked this one here, the foothills. So that's just a very quick overview, really more of a preview of what is Universal Blues Aurora distribution. Again, it's an immutable distribution, mostly based on packages being installed as either flat packs or RPM OS tree. You could also use DistroBox if you want to install packages that exist on repos of other distributions, such as Arch or Debian or Ubuntu or SUSE or whatever it happens to be. Overall, I'm very impressed with this distribution. If I wasn't so heavily invested in Arch Linux, <laughs> everything I do on Arch, you know, this might be a distribution I would consider running. I know a lot of you guys are running it I and mean, I can understand why so many of you guys are so impressed with it and why you guys were recommending it to me so I'm glad I took a look at this now before I go I need to thank a few special people I need to thank the producers of this episode Brian James Steve Armor Dragon Darloff Daedalus GDR George Lee Matthew Methos Er Jan Paul Peace Arch of Dora Realities for Less Red Prophet Roland Soul Astri Tenrin Warge into an Ubuntu and Willie these guys they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys this quick look at Aurora with would not have been possible. The show's also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.